welcome to my channel, it's really really nice to see you again. Today we're going to do a watercolour painting because we've done quite a few different acrylic ones now and I thought it was time to crack out the watercolours. So I hope you enjoy it. Today we're going to paint this little guy because I thought he was so cute and I've always wanted to paint a sea turtle and I've never done it yet. So I guess we'll be learning together. You can follow my art journey on my social medias here and on my blog um, and I'll pop the link in the description box below. So let's get to it and I hope you enjoy the tutorial. So I've just been deciding what I'm going to use today. So these are the paint colours that I can see in the image and I think would work quite well. Um, I'm also going to use this Terry Harrison masking fluid just to block in the white bits because all those little lines and little details could be quite confusing. You don't have to use these, these are just what I'm using and you can use any brands that you like. But if you'd like a list of all the colours then check in the description box and they'll all be there. So you can use masking tape, washi tape, I'm using washing tape myself just because I can't find my masking tape. It's gone on walkies. So I'm just using some cheap washi tape off eBay and just pop a little bit down on each corner. You don't have to press really hard or anything. Okay, that's fab. So I'm just going to pop out all my colours on my palette. So the colours that we're going to use today is Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Light Red, Raw Sienna, Lemon Yellow, Intense Green or Thallo Green, Cerulean Blue, Windsor Blue and Prussian Blue and Payne's Grey. And this is a masking fluid by Terry Harrison that I really like because it's blue so it's really easy to spot on your painting. So I would recommend that you have three brushes for this. I mean if you can't it doesn't matter at all but if you're, you know, if you've got plenty of brushes then I would suggest using three for this tutorial. I think we should have one bigger one for the background, um, a smaller one for detail and then one that you don't mind getting a bit gunky and you know not your favourite brush basically and that we're going to use for our masking fluid because it doesn't come off ever so well so they're the ones that I'm going to use today um, I'll again I'll put the link in the description box if you want to see exactly what brushes I'm using and um, so let's get started with popping on some masking fluid right so this is just a painting tutorial so I've already sketched out the turtle just because it would be a very long video if I included the sketch of it. So just pause the video here, open up the link to the turtle image which is in the description box and join me when you finish your sketch. So what I do with the masking fluid is I look at the image that I'm going to paint and I look where all the white bits are and then I just paint those in because at the end we're going to rub this masking fluid off and there's going to be complete white untouched paper underneath it. So I'm just going to start to put these white bits in now. I would really recommend that you download this image yourself um, instead of just looking at the one that I've got on this video because it, you'll be able to see it in much better quality. So again, the link is in the description box for the image, so I'd go and download it yourself, just, it'll make it easier on you. So I'm just using a tiny bit, just to go around all these bits in his, what is it called? It's a shell, isn't it? Yeah, turtle shell.
really helps to squint as well at the image so if you squint at the image it's easy to see exactly where the white bits are And do take your time with this bit because although it doesn't seem like it's doing much at the minute, at the end this is what will really bring it to life. Because the contrast of the white against all the colours will really like stick out. So make sure that you're very careful about where you're putting it. I mean we can always paint over it because it will just be white. So if you do, you know, not like it and want to change it that's absolutely fine. And also, because we're painting in all these little complicated bits now, it's going to be a lot more easier and fun when we're putting the paint on. Because we can go for it a little bit more without being too careful. Because we've already painted these bits in. I'm just going to do a very, very thin outline on his back as well, just so that he really stands out for when we paint the blue background on. Very, very thin. Okay, so we don't want to do too much because then it might not make for a very interesting painting, but I think it's probably just about the right amount there. So give your brush a really good wash out because as I say this stuff can actually dry in your brush and ruin it a little bit so that's fine. So now we can put the masking fluid away and we just want to wait for that to dry now. So it shouldn't take very long to dry that but we just, I mean it will kind of always look a bit wet because it is a bit sticky. See like the first bits we did here are pretty much dry now. But yeah, you just want to make sure that it's not going to run into the paint. So with watercolour, it's also best to start with the lightest parts and then going into the darker bits last. Because we really want to build the colour up in gradual stages and layers. So we don't just, you know, go ahead straight in with the black and then it all starts to bleed into all the other areas. And it's just the safest way. So I'm going to take my smaller brush now. And I think I'm going to start working on his shell because that's the bit that looks the prettiest. So one of the really cool things about watercolours is that it reacts really amazing with salt and now we're in the sea, we're a sea turtle and his shell has got some amazing texture on it and I really just want to bring that out. So what I'm going to do is go and grab some sea salt and um, you don't have to do the sea salt stage but I think it would look really cool so I'm just going to go and grab that and it would be cool if you did it as well. Okay, so with the sea salt, we usually put that on after we've put the paint on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just a little bit 
the burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna pop it over here. And again, we've put the white bits in already with the masking fluid so we can sort of go over a lot of the areas. I'm just gonna blend that out. You can also use water just straight from the water pot to just sort of like bring it down a bit. So the sea salt's gonna work with the more color we've got as well. So I'm just gonna add a bit more along here and just really pop whichever color you think is in the image where it where you think that it comes from in the image. So, I mean, down here, it's looking a little bit darker. So I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the burnt umber, just a little bit, and pop that in along this ridge of his shell. Such beautiful creatures. I'm also going to get a bit of the lemon yellow because as we can see there's a nice lemony hue along here. That. And along there as well. I'm going to get some light red as well and just pop this in here so it's an even stronger colour because the more colour we get on there You know, it's really going to stand out. But as this, as I mentioned earlier, it's better to start with a, you know, very diluted colour. And then if you think, yeah, I quite like that, then go in with the stronger colour like we did here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a tiny little pinch of the sea salt, really small. And I'm just going to sprinkle it. I mean, you can see almost instantly that it's changing things. I'm just going to sprinkle it over that back end of him. And then we've just got to wait for that to dry before we can see the proper effects. Okay, so I'm going to go over to this part of his shell now. A really lovely technique as well. You can get some water on your brush and fill it out where the colour will go. Like that. And then pick up some colour and then just drop it on and you can see it all move around on the page. Very therapeutic. Okay, and I'm going to do the same here. Just grab a tiny bit of sea salt and just sprinkle it over. And what that does, it just draws in the water, so it leaves a really cool technique. Okay, I'm going to move on to his foot now down here. So we can see that some of the lines that we've not put in with the masking fluid, they're not white, but they're a sort of like, I'd say an offish raw sienna. So we're going to grab some raw sienna with some water. And we're just going to run all over that back leg and then we can paint in the brown sort of scales afterwards and I think with this front wing I would say that's probably a light burnt sienna or raw sienna do whichever you fancy, but again, just get a very, very light. So mix it with a lot of water and just bring it all the way over that front. What do you call them? Are they wings or legs? I don't know. Flippers? If someone knows, then they can leave a comment in the comment section because 
I should really know what they're called. Okay, that's fab. It's starting to take shape guys, isn't it? And with watercolour I tend to do different sections that aren't connected because obviously when watercolour touches watercolour then the colour can bleed into each other. So which is why I'm doing, you know, separate bits that aren't really connected at the minute. So I think at the next point we should go to another bit that isn't connected while those bits are drying and that is just under his chin. Here's it, it's a very light blue. So we're going to go in with some cerulean blue with a little bit of green. It makes that lovely aqua colour. It's gorgeous. I think that's probably my favourite colour. And just get quite a bit of water and we're just going to very lightly add that where we think it matches the image. So keep checking back at your image, back at your painting, back at the image, back at the painting. And you can squint your eyes as well to really understand where this colour is coming in. And you can use the water to blend it in as well. And I'm going to bring this same colour right down this fin here. Again, just quite lightly. So I really love that colour and I think it, it does sort of come down his flippers a bit. Just add a little bit more green to that and a tiny bit of burnt umber. And then we're going to put this under his belly. Again, if you're not very confident, you can use a lot of water to dilute it. And then once it's dry, if you think that it looks good, you can go over it again with some stronger colour. And as I said a bit ago, I'd really, I'd really, really recommend you to download this picture onto your own device um, from the link in the description box because I'd much rather you look at the image and learn to decide for yourself what colours go where rather than just copying me. Which again, it, that's fine as well, but I think you'll benefit more from learning the sort of stages and how we go through the image, but also looking at your own image as well. Now we shall start into dry. I can definitely start to see some parts where the salt is working its way through the watercolour paint. And just keep washing your brush out as well, just to keep it nice and clean. If it does run like it's run here, just use your brush to sort of blend it in and just then we'll give your brush a wash and dry it off. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go over back onto this back leg now. So the little scale parts, they're in, I would say, a mixture of burnt umber and burnt sienna. So just mix those colors a little bit together till you get the right color that you want to use. And because we've already put the white on, in some areas we can just drag that over, in other areas where it's not there we're going to have to pop it in ourselves. So I'm not going to be too hung up on it, I'm just going to pop in, you know, just little splodges here and there. And then we can bring this burnt umber, because it's quite dark just under a shelter here, and just bring that in there. 
give your brush a wash out. We can just blend that in a little bit. Also, I'm just going to use my brush to blend that into the green a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to go into his head. So, let's get some burnt umber mixed with burnt sienna. Again, you can use it quite lightly, so add a bit of water, just so we get it right. And I'm just going to pop in some of these shapes on his nose. So, to create that sort of faded effect, you can put in a line and then drag that line with your brush all the way up. And then if it's just covered the whole block like it has with mine, use your brush to absorb some of the paint, then wash it and dry it very, very well. Then do it again. And you can keep doing this till, can you see it's quite faded at the top now because I've been using my brush to absorb that paint like so. And then I'm going to pop in just a little one next to it. I love their noses, they look really funny, don't they? It's kind of faded again on the front of this nose. It kind of comes down here and then fades. So I'm just going to do the same thing. So wash your brush and dry it out quite well. And then just drag this paint down. And again, if you want it more faded, then wash your brush and dry it out. And then just pull the paint from that bottom bit. Wash your brush and dry it out. And dry it out quite well. Otherwise we're going to add, be adding water every time and it will just get quite wet. There we go. That's quite nice actually. It does make it look more realistic when we add little bits like that. Okay, so now I'm going to take that same colour and I'm just going to run it over these parts that we've already popped in. And this is where masking fluid is amazing. Because although it takes time at the beginning, it's easier to do it in masking fluid, I think, than it is to do it in paint. So now his front flip is dry, I think we should go in and pop in some of those details. So I'm going to use burnt umber, with a bit of raw sienna again. And I'm just going to pop in a few of these shapes that we can see. Really helps to zoom in as well, actually. I'm gonna zoom in. And it doesn't matter if you get it perfect, just keep picking up shapes that you see and just keep adding them in. Because otherwise I think we could be here a very long time. As long as all the shapes join up together, then it's just like a pattern that you can keep following on.
If it's easy as well, you can go around the edges. I think I've found that's a little bit easier rather than just going into the middle. If you copy the edges, because they're sort of easier to remember where you are, and then you can just fill in the middle at the end. And hopefully there might not be a lot of space yet left to fill, it, fill in. <laughs> Okay, ta da! Right, now what I'm going to do while it's still wet, give your brush a wash and dry it out quite well. And then you can see down at the bottom, the further down it goes, it gets quite dark. So instead of going over these again later, what I'm going to do is get some burnt umber and I'm going to add a bit of Payne's grey or black. And then just dot it in these areas and the paint that you've already put in there should pick it up it's also going to give quite a nice effect so I'm just dotting it in all the ones which are quite dark and then as it gets light I'm just going to wash my brush out and go in again with the raw sienna and brown so I get quite a lot of colour on this time and again just carry on from where you left off and just dot it in this, you know, somewhere in that each circle. And it should just pick it up. Okay, brilliant. And that's looking really effective. And now with these same colours, we can go back over the head again. So I'm just gonna, now I like that composition and where it all is, I'm gonna go in with this darker colour. Just go in over those little gaps again. And I'm not going to go right up to the top because it's quite faded up there. So I'm just going to go over the darker bits that we wanted as well. And you can blend these out in a minute as well. So I'm just going to put them all in. Then wash my brush and dry it quite well. And then just drag your paintbrush along the edge and it should blend it out then. So dry your paintbrush, just drag it along and it should blend it out. Little techniques like this always take practice as well. So don't worry and get downhearted if you're not getting it, you know, right the first time. Okay, so I think I'm gonna pop some more detail under his belly now. So we can see that under here, there's quite dark patches. Um, so I'm just going to pick up some of that dark brown that we used a minute ago and just try and fill in where I think. And if it's like a little bit damp, like mine is, it should spread out and blend really nicely just by itself. If it's not damp, then you can always go over it with some water, you know, just clear water. I'll do that now. So just dab your brush and just pop in some water, not a lot of water, just a little bit and then you can just make some little dots I'm also going to use this same dark brown at the front of this flipper because we can see there's some little... Now I've not left enough room really for these so I'm just going to go down and it's just going to pick up what I've got. And also just down here there's a little bit as well. So we can pop that on there, wash your brush and just get most of the water off and then we can just drag that up. And then we can put in some of the details later.
Okay, so now I'm going to pop some here because there's only one area where we've not got any colour and that's because it kind of touches a lot of different areas so, you know, I don't want the colour to run but I think now all the areas that it touches should be dry. So we're going to go in with some diluted brown, so maybe raw sienna or the burnt umber but quite diluted because we've not done anything yet in this area so far. And I'm just going to pop in the colour where I think it should be, looking at the image. Okay, quite like that. I think what I'm going to do is the same technique as well. So that's quite wet still, so I'm going to grab some more stronger colour and I'm just going to dot in some of these areas where we can see it's a bit darker. So it's going to give it a really nice texture. I'm just going to pop some darker bit under here as well. Just going to go over what we've already done. And under here we can see under its shell is quite dark and the bit that we put in before has sort of gone a little bit so I'm just going to pop that in again. With watercolour you quite often have to go over bits again and again to get the colour the right strength because it does fade quite a lot when it dries. And so now I'm just looking at my image and looking at my picture and I'm just keep filling in little bits where I think oh I've missed some of it like that. You keep giving your brush a good wash as well. So now we've not gone in the eye area anywhere, so we're going to go and pop his eye in now. So very, very lightly, you can see there's a very light brown. So I'm just going to get a little bit of raw sienna, and I'm just going to draw over his eyelid with that. And we're going to wait for that to dry, and then we can pop in the rest of it. While we've got some raw sienna, I can see some bits that are quite similar to this colour that we've not popped in yet. So around his mouth, just a little bit above, and also underneath, so we can pop that in. So once you've popped in that in, just give your brush a good wash, and then use it to just blend that in. So all you have to do is go over it slightly, and it'll blend that in. There's also that same colour down on this bottom fin, so if we just pop that in along there, and if it's still damp it picks it up really lovely. So I'm just popping that in wherever I can see a sort of yellow tinge. And it's also quite a lot around his neck, so I'm just going to pop that in there. And also just behind his shoulder. This is a really good way of working because you don't have to keep washing your brush. So during like sort of later stages of a painting, when you've got a colour, while you've got it on your brush, you may as well just scan the photo and just think, oh, can I see that colour anywhere else? And then it really does add a lot of detail and dimension to the painting because there's just so many different colours in different places. And that's what makes a painting look very professional, is when you've got a lot of different colours and it looks quite complicated. Where really, all you're doing, you know, you're saving yourself time as well. And while our shell's a little bit wet, well mine still is a little bit wet, I'm just going to pop some more in here. The thing is, is that everyone's painting at this at page everyone's painting at this stage will probably be quite different you know okay 
Because although we're all doing the same thing, we've all perceived it quite differently. And I think that's what's really cool about art. It doesn't have to all be the same because that would be boring. And you can customise it as well, you know, if you want him to have a certain colour somewhere, just go for it. So I'm going to go over this back foot again because the colours have faded quite a lot here. So I'm going to pick up that quite dark brown that we had before and I'm just going to go over the bits we popped in with masking fluid again. I'm going to put that in quite heavily there and then I'm going to wash my brush and dry it quite well and then I'm just going to drag that with my paintbrush up there just so that it blends quite nicely. Okay, so now it's just a case of looking, keep looking at the painting to see which bits we've missed. I think I'm going to pop in some darker bluey green again, just around this fin because it needs a bit of a shadow there. So again, I'm going to go in my blue, my green, and just pop in that little detail there. And give you a brush a wash, and then. Just drag it over there, and that should blend it out. And I'm going to go under his chin again because that the colour is kind of like faded again. So just where it's quite dark, I'm just going to fill that in. And then wash your brush, and again we can fade that out with the brush. He is looking so cool, guys. Okay, now, yeah, now his eyelid's dry, I'm going to go in with his eye. So we're going to use Payne's Grey to get that blackness. And I'm just going to draw in that gorgeous eye. I always feel like when you draw the eye in it as well, that's when it comes to life. Like, I felt like I was just drawing a turtle before, and now when I look, I feel like it's an actual turtle looking at me. It's pretty cool. And, like, I feel like I need to name him or something. <laughs> I do have a problem with naming things. I think I'm going to leave that to dry just for a little bit before we put anything else in so I don't ruin it, basically. So I've just made a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for it to dry and I've come back with fresh eyes and I really want to add a bit more to his shell. So now it's started to dry, the salt's kind of doing its thing. But what I'm going to do is just use some of that, I think I'm going to use a bit of light red because I really like the strong colour. And I'm just going to go over this bit as here because I feel like that's lacking a bit in colour. Oh, I can feel that salt. It feels horrid. I'm just going to pop a little bit more yellow in there just because I love that bright colour. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, that's a lot brighter. And I'm just going to add some more salt over that bit, what we've just done. I think I'm going to add quite a bit of salt actually, because I don't feel like it made a lot of difference that first time. Depends what salt you have in everything though. Just give your brush a good wash. I'm also just going to add a little bit more over this front leg. So pick up your brown and I'm just going to dot in some shadows there. And now it's just detail, I mean if you don't want to ruin it, I completely understand because I do that where I add too much detail and just end up ruining it. But at the same time I think it's really good if you want to keep adding detail as well because it can make quite a lot of difference. I think I'm just going to go over this bottom bit of leg with the brown just to 
deepen that shadow a little bit and then just bring it up and again the bottom of this fin here just needs a little bit more dark of colour bit I think I'm just going to use a clean brush just to blend that out and I think that is pretty much done well the turtle's done we've still got all the sea to do yet so don't worry too much so again I'm going to let that dry completely so that when we put the sea in the edges don't all blend together although if you want that effect that might actually look quite cool but I think I'm going to just wait just to be on the safe side Another bit that I've just noticed is his eyelid. There's just a few details that I forgot to put up there, so I'm just going to pop in some of those little dots up there now. And then it's quite a deep brown underneath his eye. Yeah. I, I always do this though, I feel like, oh yeah, I've finished, and then I keep noticing little bits the longer I stare at it. <laughs> but that's okay, it's nice to get it like as perfect as it can be. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and grab our big brush, because now we're going to pop in the background. So I'll put the little one out of the way for a bit. Unless you're not very good at getting edges and going close to the lines, then I'd maybe use a little brush. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up some of... this colour. We're going to pick up, oh, 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 when you drop your brush and your paint. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to pick up some of the Windsor Red, I think that's what it's called. No, Windsor Blue Red Shade. Hmm. Um, I'm going to use quite a lot of water with this because we're going to put in a faint line so we can maybe add a bit more colour in a bit. So I'm just going to go First of all, just around the turtle. So take as much time you need for this part. And if you take a long time, then rather than letting the line dry out, just give your brush a wash and just dampen off some of the water and just use your brush to just blend the line out like that okay and then just carry on I'm just doing it very faintly for now and then we can add in more blue in a minute. So we just want to make sure that we get you know the edges right first. Okay, so once you've gone around the entire turtle, just make sure you go quite, you know, to the edge. I quite like a painterly edge, so I never go right, right up to the edge, because I quite like, you know, it adds to the painted look. Um, but I'm going to pop in a lighter blue up here and then a dark blue up here. So I'm going to get some more of this Windsor blue, because I think it's a gorgeous rich blue. I'm going to get it quite strong and then I'm just going to pop it in here. And because we've already wetted the paper, it should pick up quite well to the rest of it. Like 
that. And then I'm going to use a Prussian blue, which is sort of basically just like a darker blue. And I'm going to use it along the bottom just to give it a bit of dimension. Just give your brush a wash out and then you can sort of move the paint around because it was already a little bit wet from when we did it before. You can move the paint around quite easily then. Okay, and what we're gonna do now, just to make it look even more super cool, is get some of that salt and just sprinkle it around the turtle. It's up to you how much you wanna to go to town with that. You can either just do it a little bit or you can do it a lot or you can do it in one area, like a light strobe coming down on him. But then I'm gonna do it quite heavily along the top so it looks like the sunshine's coming through the water quite a lot. We need to wait for that to completely dry, then we're gonna brush all the salt off, and then we're gonna rub off our masking fluid that we put on right at the beginning. So we just have to have a lot of patience. Now guys, you've gotta trust me on this. Please, please wait till it is completely dry now. I mean, if you are, you know, you haven't got a lot of time or you're just excited and a little bit impatient like I am, you can always use a hairdryer, which could also make you know the salt effects even better because it's got heat applied to it so you can always go with that but remember as well if you put a heavy blast of a hair dryer on and the paint's still wet it's gonna like just oh ribbon up your painting so don't hold it too close so I'll see you back here in like two minutes or something so I'm gonna add a bit of Payne's grey to a bit of the Prussian blue and I'm just gonna add that in the bottom even more just to really bring in that depth of the sea Yeah, quite like that. And then again, pop your salt on. If you want salt on, that is. I just think it looks pretty cool. So I'd suggest probably, if you can, leave it for about an hour now to fully, fully, fully dry. It can quite easily smudge the paint when you're rubbing off the masking fluid. So I'll definitely wait till it's fully, completely dry because you don't want to ruin it at this point. Okay, so now that it's fully, fully dry, I'm going to just start to very, very carefully take off some of the masking fluid. So I'm going to start with the bit that we did first, which was down here. And you want to be very, very gentle with it. So just keep teasing at it till it starts to come up like that. And then once you've started, it's much easier to carry on. If you don't want to smudge it, if it's still a little bit damp, you can sort of grab it and sometimes it will pull a little bit like that. But it only usually lasts so much. And then you have to sort of go back to just teasing it off gently again. And this is the part that brings it to life even more because this is where you're going to get all your contrasts in because it's going to be nice and bright and white compared to the bright, bright colours that we've already put on. So just go along your whole painting, just very, very gently teasing at it till it comes. Don't be too rough with it because otherwise you might even start to get your paper up. Thank you. 
I think the salt is actually helping to bring it up a bit. Okay, so now you just want to lightly rub off all the salt that's still on there and put it in the bin. Now that it's completely finished, I just want to add a little bit more detail here because it looks like it's almost not been finished off. And you know, it's fine to just add little bits that we, we see even when we're done. Last but not least, we want to sign our painting and everyone knows it's ours. And it's now finished. And I really want to say well done guys. That was quite a long tutorial and we've done absolutely amazing to get through it and to complete our painting and I'm so proud of every one of you that has finished that. So well done and as always I absolutely would love to see the results so send them me on social media, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I might not always get time to apply and I apologise for that but I will always see them and will always have a look at them. So thank you so so much for all your support and I hope that you really really enjoyed that video because I really enjoyed painting this cute little fella. So thank you so, so much and happy painting. Bye.